Hey guys, welcome to the final day of the holiday read-along of My True Love Gave to Me. Um, today I'm going to discuss the final four stories. I'm going to be very brief because there's also a giveaway that I want to talk about in this video. Um, so the first of the final four stories is Beer Buckets and Baby Jesus by Myra McIntyre. I like this story a lot. It's about this prankster by the name of, I think his name is Vaughn. Yeah, Vaughn Hatcher. And he's a prankster and his pranks, when his pranks go too far and he ends up having to help a local pastor and his daughter put on their nativity play. I thought it was so much fun. I really, really liked the story. Um, I liked, what's her name, Gracie, the pastor's daughter, and the relationship that she had with Vaughn, the relationship that was forming. Um, I liked how she challenged Vaughn to be different, and Vaughn challenged her as well. And I like how a lot of Vaughn's misconceptions came to light, and he just realized that, you know, um, one, one life-changing event doesn't define who you are. And I like how Gracie told him, if one event has defined you so far, that means it only takes another to change the definition of yourself. And I thought that was really cool. There were a lot of great um, points of revelation in this story. Um, Gracie had a lot of good, good lines, as did her father, Pastor Robinson, I believe. Um, yeah, this was just a really, really fun story. It was really cool. Everything just went wrong for them, though, with this play, like, left and right. With the venue double booking to Shelby getting sick to, um, it's snowing and all these different things. I was just like, man. But, um, I enjoyed Vaughn. I really, really enjoyed him. For a prankster, he didn't annoy me as much as most pranksters do. So I just had a good time reading this one. I think Myra did a great job. It was the perfect um full circle short story I didn't feel like it was too much or too little it was just a nice balance so I really thought it was cool the next story is by Kirsten White called Welcome to Christmas California this one was fun I wasn't sure if I would like this one because I thought it was going to have a magical element to it and I thought that Ben the um cook in this story I thought he was going to be like magical because he was just all of a sudden making things for people that weren't on that wasn't on the menu in the diner and I was like how is he knowing what people need like is he like an angel or something and I said I don't have time for that like I don't know it I feel like if that would have been the case it would have been unrealistic for me so I'm kind of glad it didn't go that far um but our main character Maria is stuck in this town that is not necessarily called Christmas California, but it's called that because she says a, it's a consensus designated place. So it's kind of given its name. And she's kind of over it, wanting to move on and be away from there. She feels like people who are in that town don't necessarily have anything going for themselves. Her mother, her mother's boyfriend was named Rob or something. Rick. Rick. Um, and she's just kind of blah. There's this one character in the story. Her name is candy and I really enjoyed how Maria was always there for candy and protected her from her jerk of a boyfriend or whoever whomever he was Jerry I liked the story especially then once I realized that Ben wasn't going to be like this all-knowing like magical being when he was just a human dude you know who just happened to have a sixth sense for knowing what people needed he had been in juvie where he learned to cook and all that kind of stuff his background story was kind of interesting I then really really loved how Maria's misconception about her mother and her mother's boyfriend was kind of um, just shattered and how she realized that she's been wrong about what was going on in her parents lives um, in regards to her. I like how all of her assumptions just kind of shattered with that whole um, aiding of Ben helping her make the rice pudding for her mom. Um, this was a cute story. It was a really cute story. I really liked how at the towards the end she realizes that her mother and Rick had been saving money for her to get away from the town and go to college and become something and then Maria turns around and gives the money to Candy so Candy can get away. I thought that was just the biggest pleasant surprise ever and I thought it was the biggest thing of, uh, you know about generosity ever. Uh, this was just a really cute fun story. I like Maria and Ben's relationship for what it was. I liked the relationship between 
um, Maria and her mother. And I even liked Rick, even though we didn't really get to know much about Rick through anyone's eyes but Maria. So we weren't sure, as a reader, you're not sure how to really feel about Rick either until towards the end where you're just like, oh, Rick, dude, you're legit. Too legit. Too legit to quit. Okay, sorry. Done. But yeah, so I just thought this story was cute. I thought it was fun. It wasn't anything like life-changing, of course. But then again, most of these stories weren't. But yeah, it's a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Okay, so A Star of Bethlehem by Allie Carter. <sighs> I get what the story was trying to do. I really do. Like, I, I, I get it. But I didn't enjoy the story. I have a problem with contemporary stories doing things that are just so ridiculously unrealistic for me. Like, really, you're just going to give your ticket to some random Icelandic girl who wants to go to New York and you're just really like by the end of the story yeah I guess it kind of made sense but I just didn't enjoy the story as much as I thought I would okay so you end up in Oklahoma and you have to pretend to be this Icelandic girl Ethan I guess that's his name sees right through you and because I guess her name Holda the Icelandic girl pretty much told him what was going on and you have to pretend to be this Icelandic girl and you think that people are going to buy that? Like, I don't know. I knew that family was smarter than they let on and they just kind of let her pretend to be somebody. I, I, didn't, I didn't care for it, really. I'm like, I don't have time for you to pretend to be this Icelandic girl and to not be smart enough to realize that if you're from Iceland, like, you don't even act like you are. Like, how did you not put two and two together that people would figure out who you were? I don't know. I just didn't have time for it. I just kind of rolled my eyes at most of it. And then the part that started to get good, it was a little too late when her agent, Lydia is her name, um, when Lydia's agent showed up wanting to, demanding to take her back because she's like this famous person and blah, 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 blah. And I said, this part of the story was entered in a little too late for me to really care. I just kind of wanted the story to be over by this point because I just didn't believe it. I did appreciate by the end of it where Aunt Mary decides that she wants to like keep Lydia with her. I don't know. So you can do that. Like you, you're from New York, but then somebody from Oklahoma decides they want to keep you. Like, I don't know. I just didn't. I... I missed, there were too many missed opportunities for me in this story and things happened a little too late for me to care. I, eh, I just, I just, I didn't care. I, it just didn't feel realistic to me, especially if you're going to paint yourself as a contemporary story. I don't know. It just didn't, it didn't work for me. And then by the end, Ethan and Lydia are like kissing and just like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you're staying. No more running. No more running. Mwah, mwah, mwah. I'm like, what? Really? Huh? No. Just, just get out. Just get out of here. Sorry. I didn't love this one. I just, I just kind of wanted it to be over to be quite frankly. I thought it was just too much. It was cheesy in the places that didn't need to be cheesy. I just, ugh. Yeah. Yeah. And then the Lainey Taylor story, the girl who woke the dreamer. I'm going to put this book down because I'm going to explain something to you. This is what I don't like about short stories. I don't like short stories that have big worlds. There's not enough space to grow that world. You're confined to a limited amount of pages. There was hardly any dialogue, which I cannot stand. I just, I can't, I'm not a reader. I can't read paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs and pages and pages and pages and pages, and pages of description and world building only to have it only to have it stop in like 20 25 30 pages like I just I'm not I don't have the patience for it and I knew that's what I would get with the Lainey Taylor short story because that's Lainey Taylor she has gorgeous gorgeous writing I love her storytelling with Daughter of Smoke and Bone and um Days of Blood and Starlight but short story form I wasn't feeling it uh. And it makes me sad that the final two stories of the book just weren't great for me. Which is why I'm glad I combined this the, the final four stories into one video. Because if I would have done six videos like I planned, the sixth video would have been so like down and so negative. So I'm glad I decided to do it this way. 
Um, so I enjoyed the first two stories, didn't enjoy the last two stories. That's pretty much what I'm saying here. So that's it for the book. If I want to rate the book overall, I really, in all honesty, if I'm going to do this honestly, I would give this book maybe a 3.5 stars. But since I'm in the spirit of Christmas and basically Gail Foreman saved this book for me, as did Matt De La Pena and as did... Myra McIntyre, Stephanie Perkins, Rainbow Rowell, Kirsten White. They pretty much saved it. So I'll give it a four out of five. But yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm glad I read it though. There were a lot of cute stories in this, and so I I'm interested to know what you guys thought of the whole book. I'm interested what you guys thought of these final four stories. Just comment down below. But now let's move on to the giveaway. The giveaway is live on my blog. I will link it down below. I am going to be choosing two winners. They are going to choose two prizes that they want me to send to them. Um, and I will link, like I said, the blog post down below and it'll have all the details, the prizes, everything. Um, it's just a thank you for participating in the read along. Uh, this was my first read along. I don't know if it's going to stay this kind of way. If I do it again, I might change things up. I don't know. By the way, if you can't tell, I'm losing my voice and I have to sing next week. So I need to drink tons of tea. But anyway, <clears throat> So all the details for the giveaway are linked down below in my blog post and that's where you're going to be entering the giveaway as well. It's very simple. It's a two-step entry process. It's not anything that's over the top. I wanted to make it as simple as possible. The giveaway will run from today, December 18th, until Sunday, December 21st. I have the specific times on the blog post, so just make sure you read everything. Yes, so that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for joining in on this holiday read-along. I hope you guys had a great time. Comment down below with any books that you want me to host a read-along for in 2015. Uh, let me know your thoughts on My True Love Gave to Me. Head on over to my blog to enter the giveaway. It is international. It is international. So yay, because I'm going to be using either Amazon or the Book Depository, depending on where you're from. So I just wanted to just thank everybody for a great two weeks of the read-along. I hope you guys had fun. Thumbs up this video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for more. Have a great Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, holiday season, whatever. And I will see you guys, yes, next week, because I'm going to be posting a few holiday tags possibly that I might be filming this weekend I think I have work like nobody's business but I'll try also you may have noticed that I'm filming in my room a lot with this background and that's because I the sun because I use natural lighting the sun hasn't been on my side lately of course with my work schedule I get home so late so there's no sun in my living room and so it's just been kind of blah so I have white light in my bedroom which is why I'm in here so you kind of get to see all this grossness those are my vitamins right there right there but yeah it's pretty much empty I need to have like three more in there but anyway so yeah that's it for this video it's getting chatty I will see you guys soon bye